took my eyes off him for two seconds to take the lid off. And now he's gone. Hey guys, and welcome back to another vlog. I did promise I'd be doing more of these, so I really do hope you're enjoying them. Uh, today, my focus is going to be on doing a few things for potassium to make his little old life a little bit easier. Before I go getting into all of that though, I first have to say a massive thank you to you guys because I just noticed before filming this video, we reached 160,000 subscribers today which is insane. So thank you so much for your continuing support of the channel and welcome to all the newbies. I really hope this channel doesn't disappoint. Although my hair is looking flat AF today. What is going on? That's some funky stuff right there. So like I said, today's focus is making some changes to Potassium's cage. And if you don't know who Potassium is, he is the little hamster you saw right at the beginning. He is a 22 month old Campbell's dwarf hamster. He's a very old man, he's getting very frail. And unfortunately, as the days go by, it is getting hard and hard of him to get around and do things that used to be very easy for him. So it's time to start making changes to his home to make his life easier and possibly even consider moving him into a retirement cage at some point. Hey little old man, you open about now. Oh, hi. Yeah, that's my finger. Thank you for numbing. Need to get you into your travel cage now, bud. There's a good boy. Oh, you little sweetheart. Do me one teeny, 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 tiny weenie favor. Don't jump off the desk. Okay, so the reason I've got no substrate in the bottom of his traveler is just because while he is out here, I'm gonna be doing um, a mini health check just to sort of check the things that, that really matter the most right now. And one of the things I need to check is his urine to make sure it's not a strange color. There's nothing concerning about it. And that's much easier to do um, when you're using a clear bottom cage and you've got obviously no bedding there to absorb it. Um, I'm also gonna be giving him his dinner now just to make sure he's eating well. He has been eating really well, of course, straight for the cat treats. You little hoover. As you can see, he does still have a great appetite, but he can't help being a little bag of bones, unfortunately. Okay, so let's talk about that whole retirement cage thing I mentioned earlier. Now, as you can obviously see, potassium has a pretty big cage and for some hamsters in old age, this isn't going to be an issue. It really depends on the individual hamster. They all age differently. They all come against different obstacles and have different difficulties. And while some elderly hamsters can live perfectly fine in the cage they've always had, for some it can be better for them to actually downsize to something that is more accessible where you can keep keep the food, the water, the house, everything close together so they really don't have to be traveling much and they can focus on just getting comfortable. Of course, if I can avoid doing this, it is something I want to avoid doing. I would much rather they got to stay in the home that they are used to and the home they've had for the majority of their lives. At this point in time, potassium is kind of on the border of maybe needing a retirement cage. If things don't get much worse for him, he might be perfectly fine to stay in his current home just with a much more simplistic layout but if things do get worse if he does become more frail than he currently is then we may not actually have a choice in the matter luckily though I do have plenty of spare bins around that are above minimum size that would be perfect to turn into bin cages in case we need to right now though the hope is of course he will remain relatively stable and that we won't have to move him out of his home that's what we have our fingers crossed for and that is what we are going to try and make happen for as long as possible in the meantime I'm gonna get to work on his cage now I don't need to change out all of the substrate because most of it is still pretty clean. I do need to completely remove the sand pit though because it's just one giant toilet for him. I'll also be removing the divider which is what's allowing for the high substrate on this side and the very very low substrate on this side. I want to get everything as level as possible so he has a much easier time getting around. I'm going to be taking out most of those rocks, not all of them because he does love sleeping on them. Basically what I'll be doing is simplifying the cage even more than it already is. So I'm going to throw you guys into a time lapse of that.
Potassium has been in his travel cage for a fair while now. You can see he's eaten a lot of his food, especially for his size. That is quite a large amount gone, although I can see some of it's in his cheeks. And you can see from that small little splash of liquid there, he has been to the toilet and it's all looking pretty healthy. There's uh, nothing unusual looking about that. The only other thing I really wanted to do with him this evening was to weigh him. However, given that his cheeks are full of food, that's not going to give us an accurate weight. So I think I may do it tomorrow and then just add that footage in here. Good morning, you. What are you doing up so early? Huh? And what have you done to your sand bath? Is that your new bed? See what he is. Way, he's not even close to 25. Wow! I honestly thought we were gonna be lucky if he was over 30 grams. 50 grams! You're doing fine. There's nothing to worry about there. Well, obviously, there's something to worry about your tiny butt. Brilliant, that's fantastic. I'm so happy with that. I was really not expecting his weight to still be up that much. I thought he would have lost so much in the last couple of weeks. Something I want to add in here is kind of the reality of the situation we're in with potassium. Now, like I said, he's 22 months old. He is aging quite quickly now. At one point, he didn't seem to be showing any signs of aging and he looked like he was gonna do really, really well. Then all of a sudden it was like time caught up with him and He's just sped through the aging process and every single week things seem to be getting more and more difficult for him. Now, obviously you cannot guess exactly how long an animal is going to live for. Um, bit of a weird cut there, I realized just how dark it was getting so I had to close the curtains, turn the lights on, move to the sofa. We're good to continue. So there is absolutely no way of predicting exactly how long any animal is going to live. Even if you give it the best care in the world, there's no guarantee that it will live for, you know, X, Y, Z number of years. And even when they're aging and they're coming near to the end of their life, there is just no way of being able to guess exactly when they're going to pass. Now, great example of this was again with Amelaise who lived for, I believe a whole six months or more longer than we ever expected her to. She reached not quite this point that potassium's at uh, and we started preparing ourselves for her passing away and she just kept on going and going and going and going and she had a very peaceful death in the end um, she was very very old when she went so there is hope that potassium will do something similar but that's definitely not something that we would hold out for or expect to happen. Going by my own experience with elderly hamsters and with the speed that potassium is declining, I will be honest with you guys, I don't think he's gonna make it to his second birthday. Now, uh, we don't know exactly when potassium was born, but it's somewhere around at the end of November, early December, so that's another you know, two months away. I don't know if he will make it that far. Of course, if Potassium does make it to his second birthday and makes it as far as the end of the year, I would be absolutely thrilled. But at the same time, I am quite realistic about things like this and I'm not going to get my hopes up for something that doesn't seem that likely. And this kind of relates back to questions I get from you guys asking, how do you cope with the death of a pet? And I, I probably at some point need to make a video on this, but it's the, again there's no possible way that i can tell you to deal with the death of an animal because every single person will deal with it differently for me though having a point where you can just start accepting it and just saying okay they're getting old and acknowledging that they're getting old and they're not going to be around for much longer helps tremendously personally if i was somebody who didn't acknowledge an animal getting old didn't acknowledge the fact that their life was coming to an end and um you, you i'm sure you all know a person maybe you're one of them yourself who just doesn't like to think about it when your animal starts getting old you just you don't want to think about the fact they're getting old and they're coming to the end of their life if i was like that i think it would be a lot harder to actually deal with the process but it's something that is absolutely going to happen eventually it's something that you have to face you have to deal with and the reason i can talk so easily and so candidly about a topic which for many other people understandably would be um possibly a, a morbid topic and, and certainly could be an upsetting one is just simply because 
I have been prepared for this for a long time from the moment my hamsters reach 18 months old as the average lifespan for a hamster is 18 months to two years. That is the point where I start getting myself ready and saying okay that are getting old they are officially a senior hamster at that point. I need to start getting my brain into gear and getting ready for this. And even if the hamster lives well past the average lifespan, which is certainly something that does happen more and more commonly these days, hamsters living to three or four years old, it's still better to be prepared, at least from my point of view. But I wanted to add that into this video just because I'm sure there'll be some people who don't understand why this is such an easy thing to talk about and why I can just, you know, talk about a hamster that is still alive dying in potentially less than two months without it upsetting me. I will definitely miss him. I'm really gonna miss his chilled, laid-back personality. He has been an absolute doll since day one. But it won't be a massively sad thing to happen because he is old and I, as somebody who has lost hamsters at younger ages and who has lost a few hamsters from illnesses, to have a hamster reach old age, to have lived a full life and to die just of natural causes and hopefully what you want to happen is for them to just pass in their sleep so it's nice and peaceful, when that happens it's harder to be sad. It's mostly just missing them that is the issue you have to face. Anyway, I am sorry to end this video on a bit of a morbid note. I'm hopefully gonna have a cute clip of one of the hamsters to shove in at the end here so you can enjoy that. Um, but you guys have asked me about this so many times. Every time my hamsters start getting old these questions come up. So I'm talking about it. Anyway, if despite all that you still enjoyed this video, please don't forget to leave a thumbs up. You can also share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye. Here we go, buddy. Yeah. Have a little explore. <laughs> <laughs>